All right, guys, welcome back to Celestial Invitational. I'm D2, with me is Monk. And uh, we just saw the second match, uh, Life Coach versus Blue, go to Life Coach three games to one after Blue had a couple early concedes. Uh, so far, we have Firebat and Life Coach as winners, and Zoro and Blue as uh, losers thus far. But we do have four matches remaining, and uh, the next one, probably the most hype of this group, is going to be Firebat versus Life Coach. And uh, just uh, overall, what do you think about this match? Yeah, both players are currently uh, one win apiece and zero losses, so this is going to probably propel whoever wins the n next match into the playoffs, into the round of eight. So definitely a very exhilarating match there. Not only that, but Firebat and Life Coach are widely regarded as probably around top five players in the entire world, so a very hyped match indeed. But not only that... These players will have to be bringing suboptimal decks and suboptimal classes to this match. And I have a little surprise for you guys. Both these players have Shaman in their lineup. And we're going to see Firebat. We're going to see his deck list right now. All right, there it is for you on the screen. And if, if you guys are just tuning in and you're wondering why they're playing Shaman, it's because they have to play all nine classes today. Uh, so three classes each per match, and they play three matches uh, today. It looks like it's going to be the more aggro-focused Shaman. It's probably the best Shaman right now. Uh, obviously, Luffy and Raynet uh, helping to innovate that. For mm -hmm. uh, his warrior, going to be a patron warrior. And uh, for his hunter, looks like it's going to be a hybrid hunter. Right, so this Mech Shaman decklist, it looks to be a, a carbon copy of Raynan's decklist that he used to get rank 5 on the NA server, I believe. Um, so shout outs to Raynan, thanks for Tempo Storm for hosting uh, this tournament on their channel again. Uh, this Patron Warrior, I think uh, Farbad is, he's kind of known for playing Patron Warrior, but he's also known for not liking Control Warrior. So I can definitely see why he went for this path. And the Hybrid Hunter is another interesting pick, I would say. I think most people these days are leaning towards sort of the uh, mid-range Hunter style because the problem with Hybrid Hunter is that um, a lot of its minions don't really trade that well in the early stages of the game anymore. Like against Priest, for example, uh, you can't really deal with the early minions. Against Paladin, it's kind of hard as well. Yeah, exactly. And one thing to keep in mind, guys, is that these players didn't know which players they were submitting these decks to, uh, against. They were basically told, okay, submit three or submit nine uh, decks, and they, you know, designate three for each class, so you can kind of, you know, uh, put them together in a way that could be a good match strategy in general. But they didn't uh, submit. They, basically, they said, okay, this, these are my match one decks. These are my match two decks. These are my match three decks. That's how they went about it. And uh, it's resulting in this kind of interesting spot where Life Coach is going to have to smork it up today with the aggro shot, and I am loving this. Typically, between these two guys, you're going to see, you know, a really long, drawn-out match. You know, Firebat maybe plays, you know, Freeze Mage, Life Coach with heavy control decks, but today's going to be a lot of aggro. It looks like his mage is going to be Mech Mage, and his uh, Hunter is going to be a high... No... Uh... Mid range, uh, definitely mid range. Yeah, mid range. Yeah, mid -range. Do, do you honestly ever expect Life Coach to bring anything but mid range Hunter? Yeah, that's if he's true. expect, if he's forced to bring Hunter, basically. That's true. That's true. He does. Uh, he does enjoy the mid range Hunter. He is basically the inventor of the Sunshine Hunter, obviously. But right. uh, I am just looking at this Shaman deck. I am loving uh, the opportunity to be able to see Life Coach smork it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> typically, Life Coach will be bringing three control decks of Torrents, but this is certainly a rare opportunity. Uh, with regard to that Hunter deck, um, I asked him once, uh, I was at a tournament with him, uh, Assembly in Finland, and he brought a mid-range Hunter deck. I don't know if you remember around that time period, Hybrid Hunter was widely regarded as the better uh, Hunter variation. I would say about 70 or 80% of players were bringing Hybrid Hunter instead of mid range or phase hunter. And I asked Life Coach, um, like, it's what? why I regarded that. What? Oh, wow. We're already this far into a game? That's bizarre. Well, let's, let, let's hold on that thought for a second. Let's get back to it later what? on. But um, <laughs> it's. Okay, let's take a, a moment to figure out what's going on here. Life Coach, well, smorking up with <clears throat> the shaman. Uh, I can't exactly see the warrior's health right now. That probably matters quite a bit. Yeah. The thing is, these matches are delayed a little bit, so I this is kind of uh, confusing to me that they're uh, 
that uh, it's caught into this point. I, I feel like they could start from the beginning if they wanted to. But uh, in any case, this is what we're. This is where we are. Uh, turn eight uh, looks like Firebat's in a decent position. Uh, Fire Life Coach has a decent amount of damage in his hand. He can get his opponent down to uh, six, right here. Um, just kind of depends on the uh, the uh, top decks coming out from Life Coach. Looks like he's gonna hold off on uh, doing right. damage to, or basically using the life. Or excuse me, the lightning bolt on his face until he gets the spell damage totem. But gonna commit the tunnel drug. All right, so um, we're kind of getting right into this game. But generally these days, there's that not that many heal cards from the warrior. Not any many armor gains. Shield block has been really cut <clears throat> from these decks, um, and you really basically are left with armor smith. And sometimes the uh, one or two unstable ghouls along with that armor smith. Um, other than that, just as fire bat is going to be getting just two health a turn, but that might not be enough if any kind of burn is drawn. Yeah, definitely. Uh, life coach. The funny thing also is that if he draws something like doom hammer, he could do five damage using that because he can attack with the power mace first. Uh, Noitron is the pickup here. Never lucky. But uh, yeah, looking for probably something like Lava Burst, though we don't know if he's already used some of these burn cards uh, to kind of, you know, chunk Firebat down to the health he currently is at. Um, so yeah, this is going down to the wire. Life Coach all in, going to need to just get as much damage to the face as possible, whereas Firebat just trying to hold on, maybe find mm -hmm. an Armorsmith and uh, just make sure to weave in the hero power every single turn. Right, very key in Rotron here. If he... Uh... Didn't get something like this, then he probably would have died, because um, it's pretty much lethal on board with the inner rage. Yeah. Um... So uh, again, if okay, that didn't work out really well. If the boom bot hit perfectly, I believe that was lethal as yeah, well. Yeah, it was lethal. We get an instant replay there. <laughs> Sorry about the right. uh, lag from the Chinese server uh, here. I, I just really wanted to see that boom bot do its uh, work again. <laughs> Yeah, it's totally. almost as if there were two boom bots. <laughs> exactly. So it looks like it's going to be an inner rage just to uh, maximize the amount of mana that uh, Firebat can use rather than using that whirlwind. Or uh, maybe, okay, she's going to go for both, it looks like. And uh, what can he pick up here that's actually lethal? Ooh. Um, gets um, a ton of cards here. Um, cool task, is that lethal? I kind think it's less about lethal and more about uh, surviving. Like, the Dread Corsair is going to do right, a lot of work here. Right, yeah. The Dread Corsair is a, a pretty big deal. Probably going to play that and uh, maybe use the Lotheb. I believe he has lethal, even if he uses the Lotheb here. So, probably use the Lotheb just to not take any damage at all. Use the Dr. Boom face and Smack face with his weapon. And uh, Life Coach is down to this draw, which I don't believe he has any draws unless he gets spell damage plus lava burst. That's not going to be it. So, yeah. Firebat looks like he's going to take game one. Certainly, I would say, a favorite matchup for the patron versus the kind of uh, smorky shaman. Um, right. I, I think, honestly, Firebat was going to get a win out of this deck uh, against Life Coach's lineup, no matter what. Patron Warrior against three very aggressive decks. I mean, Patron Warrior is the deck you want to use to farm aggressive decks, and Firebat just did that perfectly here. Yeah, and Conquest is kind of the opposite effect, right? It's not that what you can clear with or what you can get the wins with. It's more... Uh, what you can kind of prevent your opponent from getting the wins with, right? So uh, being able to kind of prevent Life Coach from getting any sort of, um, you know, getting his Shaman out of the way easily, you know, that uh, can play a major factor in his Conquest format. So, um, yeah, apologies for that. I'm <laughs> kind of out of control that uh, the match started at turn 8, but Firebat's is going to take that game 1. And that's going to leave Shaman and Hunter for Firebat, whereas uh, Life Coach has Hunter, Shaman, and Mage remaining. And uh, like uh, some of you in chats notice, it is Tom60229 now commentating on the left. He is uh, Taiwanese, not Chinese. I do believe there are four people in the studio or uh, around the area who are not actually Chinese. Um, I think it's Eloise, or not right now, but uh, eventually, Eloise Surrender. Tom and uh, Colento, I believe. So uh, that'll be interesting to see uh, because they were all extended invites to go there. Right. It's just uh, traveling to China is generally a bit of a hassle, especially for um, 
Well, uh, for anyone who doesn't have a visa, you have to kind of apply for a visa. Uh, and although it's pretty easy for most Europeans to get a visa, uh, it's still a hassle to go to the embassy. And um, Colento has a visa anyway, so it may be more convenient. And he actually really likes, he likes going to China in general because he has a lot of fans in China. Um, in China, he's probably, al along with Savits as well, Savits, Reynad, um, Colento, they're three of the most popular players in China, as opposed to uh, in the West. Like you would say, maybe Amaz and Trump are a bit more popular. Yeah, it's really funny that way. Although Colento's uh, his stream numbers are getting pretty up there. <laughs> Although it could be because of because of China as well. But uh, yeah, I do remember looking for some information and just kind of wading through the Chinese websites, not knowing too much Chinese myself, and using you know copy paste to find people's names and get information. And I, I stumbled on a couple of sites that had got or had Colento. Uh, they had his name kind of nicknamed with like God in there. So apparently they yeah. refer to him as God Lento as well. Oh, they they actually they referred to him as K God in China. Right, right, okay. <laughs> and I I remember I had this like really long and like kind of awkward conversation with him where he kept asking me why they called him K God. Like he, I I don't know it's like he couldn't understand the concept of like. Adding K to like adding God to someone's first initial. He's like, why that nickname? Why like not some other random nickname? I'm it's like, like, I don't know. It's just something they do. Just call me God Lento. It's the best. No, yeah. uh, did we have a regame? Wasn't there a? Oh wait, no. Uh, I, I think there was a spectator bug, so we had to switch screens or oh, switch right, right. sides. So, I remember someone had a one drop, so I was like, wait, what just happened? Um, I bel so it is uh, life coach. It seems on the shaman. And it looks like we have the perspectives reversed here. And, uh, okay, there it is. So, Life Coach uh, giving this ability to see his turn one play. Thank you very much for the rope. Uh, it actually helped <laughs> in this instance. And uh, going to be a Tunnel Trog turn one. No coin into the Cogmaster. And uh, let's see what Firebat can do to combat this. This is pretty uh, scary for the Hunter here. Having to right. deal with this guy who has so much health. It's kind of like dealing with a Mana Worm. Yeah, back in the day when uh, I was like keeping uh, stats of around like three months ago, um, Hunter versus Mech Shaman was actually the most one-sided uh, matchup ever because it was something like seventeen to two in favor of Hunter. Yeah, and, I, saw that, um, I saw that percentage yeah. too. Yeah. These days, though, I I think it's a little better because there's a lot more racing potential from the Shaman, and also it has like more opportunities to get board control, especially with the Tunnel Trog. That card has made such a difference. Um, but it's also like makes a difference on whether like you start with it or not. So if Life Coach hadn't drawn that Tunnel Trog on turn one, I think that matchup like would still be like 80, 90 percent in favor of Hunter. But now with the Tunnel Trog, Life Coach has much more of a chance. Yeah, definitely. And you have just so much burst coming out of the Shaman, even though, like you say, uh, the old Mech Shaman had that burst as well. Just uh, more resilient minions like uh, this Unbound Elemental. Um, I don't really play... the. I've played a kind of Luffy version, which didn't have the Unbound Elemental, but I felt this matchup was pretty decent for the Shaman, just because you get to race them so easily, and uh, things like the Tunnel Trog that stick on the board and are just annoying for the Hunter to deal with. They don't want to be trading into a Tunnel Trog, but they'll trade into something smaller, you know, like those uh, Whirling Zavomatics that are easier to kill. So, uh, yeah, overall, just a much better matchup for the Shaman. We'll see how this one in particular plays out. Um... Firebats, uh, with the opportunity to play the Animal Companion. What is he holding right now? Do you know? Uh, I did not catch that. It, it might have been a second Animal Companion. Yeah, it could. Uh, oh, like, just a lot for now. Yeah, just wants to get as many things on the board as possible. Uh, obviously, that means he's highly likely to kind of float some mana next turn, but uh, yeah, I just want some as much stuff in general. And it could set up for a really good Leoc next turn, potentially. Right. Now, not only that, it just clearly telegraphs the life coach, hey, I'm a, either a face hunter or a hybrid hunter. Definitely not a, a mid-range hunter right now. I'm not going for a Houndmaster place, which probably um, it's probably n not good for life coach. I feel like mid-range hunter would probably be the worst type of hunter against this kind of deck. Uh, for whose sake? For life? For, for, uh, for uh, Firebat. It would be the worst for Firebat. Oh yeah, because it's too slow to be able to deal with the burst from Shaman. Um, right. Yeah, I would agree with that. I kind of heard the opposite, so I was a bit confused. But uh, yeah, Life Coach with another kind of tough decision here. Um, the Cog Masters don't trade well with the Mad Scientist, but they're okay versus everything else. And uh, I mean, one option is to just crackle the face and then get a 
good chunk of damage <laughs> in. Uh, you do get you know fire damage from your minions that way, just going to the face. So um, we'll see how uh, much he has embraced the smork this uh, or right now. <laughs> Could be the play, but no, gonna gonna go ahead and just uh, get some guys on the board. We'll see if he makes any trades here. And uh, again, sorry for the lag there, guys. And uh, yeah, just one trade goes to face with the other one. We'll see if Firebat's Leoc. Uh, summoning skills are on point. Typically, you want Huffer, but or something's Misha, but in this case, yeah. the Ducks probably the best. Gets the Huffer, always Huffer. Honestly, none of them are that bad here. Yeah, true, true. They're, they're all pretty good, which is why Animal Companion is put in basically every Hunter deck, no matter what you're playing, because uh, typically you're going to get something good out of it. Uh, it can be pretty bad sometimes, but in this case, all of them were, were pretty decent. Okay, Pilot Shredder curves out, but it looks like Firebat will definitely be, have a strong stranglehold on board control. Well, the uh, don't underestimate how sticky this Pilot Shredder can be. Although, I guess you're right, he can play the Freezing Trap to be able to, or, or just activate it with the uh, Mad Scientist. But, um, yeah, the looks like board control will go to Firebat potentially for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Life Coach... Life coach not understanding potentially the uh, the smork trades that he needs to make here. Right. Yeah, going for a lot of the control plays. Life coach he went along the line of just trading and getting minion value, getting board control. But unfortunately, it just looks like just looking at both these hands, it looks like Firebat has way more options in order to wrestle board control away. Like all these cards, with the exception of um, Kill Command. Just do exactly that. They get board control, and kill command can even be used to get board control. Whereas life coach's hand, like crackle, that's really not good for board control. Doom hammer, really not good as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just, I just want to go back to that last play where he traded his two three into a four one. That's kind of a control play that you make, right? You kind of want to mitigate damage to your face as much as possible. But I felt like he had to kind of uh, get as greedy as possible and start trading uh, with some of the other minions, or maybe even go face there. Uh, as it stands, he is able to, you know, make sure that the night the mad scientist uh, from Firebat doesn't get any value. But um, you know, getting your getting your uh, pallet shredder, which is one of your biggest minions in your deck, frozen back, is not the best situation. And so he, here's an interesting uh, path for Life Coach. Life Coach, so far, I don't think he's seen any hybrid hunter cards. Like he hasn't seen Lotheb or piloted shredders from his opponent. So at this point, he might be thinking, is this Face Hunter or Hybrid Hunter? Is this Explosive Trap from Face Hunter? Or is this a Freezing Trap from Hybrid Hunter? And he has to make a decision pretty quickly. The one thing he does know, that, does know though, excuse me, is that it is the same trap. So most likely it's going to be Freezing Trap. Um, obviously, you know, Explosive Trap can be something if you're playing against Face Hunter. But uh, a lot of times they, those run one uh, copy of Snake Trap as well. So overall, I would say it's slightly more likely that's going to be freezing. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I just think that Life Coach needs to be kind of racing more rather than worrying about the board. Firebat seems to be doing a better job of just not worrying about his opponent's board and just hitting the face, even playing you know what uh, is kind of the slower deck. Okay, realizing that again, this is not Snake Trap. Yeah, <laughs> for for the third time. So I mean, obviously, he wants to kind of get that value, quote unquote, of getting rid of the scientists without getting the uh, secret off, which you know is pretty valuable a lot of the time. But he's taking a lot of damage, and he's just losing the race. Firebat just hero powering from here on out will be able to get a lot of damage in. Mm -hmm. There's also the option. Um, so after you make these uh, attacks. Um, do you think it's better to use the Totem Golem or the Pilot of Shredder here? Because the, the Totem that you get with the Hero Power fitted in could be a Taunt Totem. Um, and it seems like you'd rather have the Totem Golem bounce back rather than a second Pilot of Shredder. Yeah, that could be the case. Uh, I think he just wants to get as much power on the board as possible. And uh, interestingly enough, Life Coach kind of holding back on tanking worked out here because Firebelt wasn't able to play this uh, Freezing Trap, but uh, he's on 4 health, so uh, this game is pretty much over. Life Coach is never going to be able to race. Um, he's not dead, as we can see, uh, at least in the hand of Firebat, but uh, he needs to pick up... He needs to already have Rockbiter in hand and pick up the double Rockbiter, I think, for in order to, to win here. Well, though, 
Okay, let's see. Um, what can he do here? He can maybe... If Firebat doesn't pick up the win here and Life Coach top decks Rockbiter, would that be lethal? Um, because he can yeah. guaranteed get the... Uh, he gets more damage with the Crackle in on this. And he gets actually spell damage on them. So he actually has a kind of outside chance. Up oh, there. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. So there's the quick shot from Firebat. He's able to pick up the win. And he goes up two games to zero on Life Coach here. And... Uh, only the Shaman yeah. remaining for Firebat. That's actually really unfortunate because I believe Life Coach actually had Lethal on board um, with the Crackle in hand. Right. He didn't even need to top deck Rockbiter weapon there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that kind of just shows the incredible burst power of the Shaman, which is uh, kind of why I wanted him to, wanted to see him raise as well. You know, you can kind of just get these explosive turns. Um, but uh, he went for kind of more board control, and uh, I think it that uh, end up hurting him ended up hurting him in the end because he was taking tons of damage uh, with his uh, doom hammer damage that he I think was going to take in the end. Yeah, honestly, that was really hard to tell. Um, just either way, life coach, uh, it, like basically, if he went for the more face plate, it would have turned out to be a completely different game. Mm -hmm. Who knows, really? So you can see life coach a bit exasperated, not enjoying playing uh, this sort of. You know, aggressive style of decks. Uh, not his uh, forte, obviously. But uh, we are going to be going into, I think, an exact mirror. Are they playing the exact same card for card? No, cards? no. Uh, Life Coach is slightly higher curved, so he has Pilot of Shredders in his deck, whereas Firebats uh, just caps out at the Spider Tanks and the Unbound Elementals. Okay. So, yeah, a bit faster for Firebat, though Life Coach does have a, a very low cost at hand. And a uh, pretty tough decision here for Firebat, because if he plays that Tunnel Trog, he could get blown out by some sort of mech. Uh, on the other hand, he could play the Tunnel Trog into Coin Lightning Bolt, but that locks him out of his next turn. So, pretty tough decision here for him. Yeah, if you don't play the Lightning Bolt here, the problem is that... Um, like, if, if Life Coach just plays a mech, which he has a very good chance of having in his hand then you just get completely mm. blown out. Whereas with this, um, it's really hard for Life Coach to deal with this 2-3. You have to Rock Biter or Lightning Bolt, and that's kind of not what you want to do on turn 2. Like, if you Lightning Bolt, you overlook yourself on turn 2, meaning that you can't even play anything the next turn. Oh, wow. So it looks like Firebat picked up a, a one-drop. Yeah, I guess that left him really good for him to be able to uh, do that. Though Life Coach can play two... Or he can play two cards at the very least, uh, depending... Whether he wants to go for two minions or a minion and a lightning bolt. Um, going back to that first turn, since uh, life coach might take a while here, uh, I think it might have been okay to go for the coin totem golem, and then he has the uh, the trog for the next turn. And obviously, totem golem kind of uh, contests anything that comes on the board. What do you think about that? Mm, totem golem. So if he coin out the totem golem, he would only have one man in the next turn. I guess the problem I have with that is if you leave yourself with one mana the following turn, then you either you're forced to lightning bolt and that can get kind of awkward. Um, well, he had the trog is the thing. Or you can trog, but but the problem with the trog is that you might leave yourself vulnerable to the trog just being a one three, and having like a whirling zapmatic or right, right. like something else trade into it. Okay, so in any case, it ends up working out okay for him. Looks like life coach goes. Uh, for this more controlly play rather than playing the Whirling Zapomatic, which wouldn't trade very, very well. Uh, Firebat has no removal on hand, which is unfortunate for him. Likely going to be seeing. Uh, well, he could go for uh, Mech Warper and uh, Whirling Zapomatic, but that obviously doesn't trade too well with yeah, the boys. Can, can, can you imagine how much better this deck would be if Totem Golem were a mech? <laughs> I know, right? It would be pretty insane, but. Right, I don't like think that you... last turn would have been pretty insane there. Yeah, kind of funny that it's a totem, um, you know, with all the tribes in uh, in Hearthstone. Totems uh, not quite there yet, as far as being, yeah, you know, something that can that can kind of compete. But um, well, it's it's starting. You know, the totem golem is doing his best. Uh, in any case, Life Coach has an interesting decision here. He can, you know, just get super board control by using the Lava Roots. Looks like, looks like he's going for that. It's just uh, too ugly to trade any other way, it seems like. Yeah, you get that recurring 5 damage in, and it looks like Firebat doesn't have a way to deal with that. Um, he didn't have a way to deal with the, the last turn. He's probably not going to have a way to deal with it this turn. Rockfighter, though, so 
he can clear it off this turn, I guess. Yeah. Um... It's really inefficient, though. Even more inefficient than that lava burst to kill a 3-4. Yeah, I don't think Firebat's really too worried about uh, this Mech Warper right now. He knows that Life Coach only has two cards in hand, so what are you really, you know, allowing to be discounted? Uh, though, he is gonna actually going to take it out. I guess he's worried about it just trading into his Whirling Diplomatic. That's probably his biggest concern right now. Uh, again, sorry for the uh, bit of lag spikes. We are piggybacking on the Chinese stream. And uh, again, thanks to uh, Celestial for allowing us to uh, piggyback off their stream as well. Just to throw that out there. But uh, Life Coach, I mean, this is kind of Life Coach's wheelhouse, though, right? I mean, even though it's an aggressive deck, just being able to play aggro versus aggro in a matchup that uh, lends itself to more trading, he's uh, more, more, you know, comfortable, I think, with this right now. Yeah, and for the first turn here, Firebat uh, just doesn't have anything, really. He just uh, plays the minions, and unfortunately, well, you know, when, when Rolly Zapomatic gets really... Uh, Buffed up and oh wow, double tunnel trog again. When Rolly's Zapomatic just like does its work, it's gonna do six damage a turn. That's gonna be pretty threatening. But mm. uh, I mean, again, Life Coach draws a little dead too. Actually, yeah, Firebird has a bigger board. I mean, he has like pretty good trades to make here, and uh, Life Coach doesn't have much damage outside of that. Oh, but, that's uh, pretty key. Yeah, is it? This is pretty good. I think. I mean, almost anything Firebat drew there would have been probably useful. You know, any sort of minion on the board as well. Uh, so he gets to get a couple trades here. He gets to kill the Tunnel Trog, and um, I feel like Light and Firebat. Uh, he's ahead in this game. It's going to be on Life Coach to kind of draw damage. I, I imagine yeah, it, he wants to draw a Doomhammer right now. Yeah, it's just, it's just funny because I I think like two turns ago, Life Coach was in a pretty commanding lead there, but these top decks when. It, it just, when you're drawing either potentially like a really good card in Power Mace or a really bad card in either a one drop or burn, it just makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, definitely. Um, Life Coach with the Rock Biter, not going to be too helpful for him. Uh, you can tell he's like kind of almost despondent playing right now because he just he just hates not having options in his hand, right? It's it's probably so much more painful for him uh, to be in this spot with no options and nothing to do. Uh, rather than, you know, his opponent kind of killing him with, you know, 10 cards in hand. I think he'd much prefer the latter. <laughs> but uh, it's just, I don't know, just a sad situation for a life coach, not being able to do anything. Um, as far mm -hmm. as how Firebat came back in this game, I think he just had one more big minion to be able to kind of secure uh, secure this right here. Like, say if he had only the Totem Golem or only the uh, Unbound Elemental and maybe a spell instead of what he drew there, it could have been better for life coach, but... Um, yeah, Fire, Firebat just kind of barely edging the win there. Kind of like how, you know, Paladin versus Paladin works out, where uh, one player can kind of snowball just with that one minion. Yeah, it, it feels like it matters even more in Shaman versus Shaman, especially the aggressive Shamans, because only, like, a few cards in your deck are actually good at trading, like the Totem Golem, the Unbound, the Spider Tank, and um, the Tunnel Trog, perhaps. All the other cards are just focused on burn, which is not really what you want at all. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the case. Um, so, Firebat, uh, again, sorry, he hit, hit a bit of a lag spike, and we get the uh, advertisement, the Shark at Rock. Shark at, did I say Shark at Rock? The Rocket Shark <laughs> on the screen there. Um, uh, Firebat's basically just... The the thing is to uh, look at, at this match is that uh, Firebat still has to kind of clear for a few turns because he, has, he is at such a low life total. So he has to clear basically every single totem and everything that comes out uh, because he might just die to some sort of weird, you know, flame tongue, whatever. Um, so yeah, he has to basically clear every single turn. So Life Coach has several turns here to draw on something like a Doom Hammer. And if Firebat mm -hmm. can't get a taunt, Life Coach still can take this win. Uh, each turn, though, it's more and more likely for Firebat to get that taunt totem because it doesn't look like Life Coach will be clearing any of his totems anytime soon. So if basically, if he doesn't, if Firebat doesn't get the taunt this turn, then he'll he's almost guaranteed to get the taunt the next turn, which kind of locks Life Coach out. Yeah, that said, uh, um, oh, Life Coach he was thinking Ooh. he definitely didn't want to trade the last turn with this Rockbiter because he was going for the Doom Hammer out. But now that he drew. The piloted shredder, it changes everything. 
Yeah, definitely. It, this pile shutter could kind of dominate the board here and uh, reverse the situations board-wise. Uh, we do know that Firebat has that lava burst in hand to be able to kind of uh, rem remove. But uh, I mean, Life Coach knows that he probably he knows it's probably removal, probably not going to be a minion. <laughs> so he's thinking that I need to make sure that my uh, my pile shutter can stick to the board so I can kind of get minion combat later. He's deciding which one to kill. Um, the the totem golem can be scary uh, if Firebat removes the first half of this Pile Cheddar because it can heal even farther. Like it can kill two, three, and keep healing from there. Uh, whereas the you know Unbound Untimal can grow uh, even farther. So a pretty tough decision there for Life Coach. Let's go with the kill on the um, uh, that guy. The the uh, oh my god Unbound Elemental. Okay, so let's go with the kill on that. And Life Coach or sorry Firebat is now contemplating hitting face here. Uh, so uh, one like the key tenet that Firebat tells everyone that when he when people ask him for advice is always set up lethal. So let's look at this board right now. Six damage um, with the lava burst, and then three with the um, the totem golem. So next, the Firebat can put his opponent down to eleven, and he in addition to that he will have six damage on the next turn, which is just not enough. Yeah. I guess he figures that if he starts trading with his Pile Cheddar, obviously it has two bodies, so it's just kind of too annoying for Firebat to deal with, and he might not be able to close the game out if he doesn't start hitting the face of Life Coach. Um, and obviously that Taunt oh. Totem helps as well, so yeah, I guess the second 50-50. That Taunt Totem was pretty huge, because now there's a whole host of cards that um, Life Coach can't draw for lethal. Like, for example, uh, the, a weapon isn't lethal anymore. Um, any spell isn't lethal anymore. Wow, and that would have been lethal had that been the case. Though, Firebat maybe would have played slightly differently uh, if that were not the case. Uh, you never know. Life Coach here, uh, what can he do to save himself? Obviously, that Lightning Bolt hits for four, so he can clear out either this Totem Golem or this Spire Tank. Likely going to be the Spire Tank because of the mech's energies. And uh, from there, he can stave off killing himself. Uh, but uh, what do you... I imagine he's going to use the Lightning Bolt to kill off the Spider Tank. You use one uh, Shredder on the Taunt Totem, and then from there, I guess you kill the Trog because that guy can grow. There, there's actually a possibility that you want to kill off both your Pilot of Shredders in order for more of a possibility uh -oh. to get something relevant, right? Like a right, Flame Tongue right, right. or a Vitality Totem. Uh, looks like he's not going to go for that option. Um, yeah. And there there was um, oh, but that's actually yeah. a big deal. He actually attacked with the wrong one because if he attacked with the left one, then the right one could spawn in Dire Alpha or the Flame Tongue Totem. So, yeah, it's a very uh, good point. Yeah. So now, if if this is a buffer guy, okay, still mini bots a good minion in general, but not right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kill off uh, the minions that we thought he would kill off. Uh, you know, assuming that he didn't go for double trade. Let's see if Fireback can pick up Lethal. Doesn't pick up Lethal. But uh, does get you know sizable minion that life coach will have to deal with, and importantly, no taunt totem this time. I uh, kind of feel like you have to go for face. Yeah, I don't think you you can trade here. It's just so, I mean, so half half the deck is lethal now. That's that's not one of those cards. He, so we're we're, he we're gonna see some more trading again. He has to totem first, right, to guarantee that he gets the taunt totem. Um, and then what do you do from there? This is really tough. So what do, what do you do? Do you, you taunt? I think you you trade the uh, piloted shredder first. Right, or, right, 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 right. Because yeah, yeah. you can get some uh, totem humps. Uh, mm -hmm. But then you still have to totem first just because you want that taunt totem as badly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually also Life Coach has to think about does he want to kill off the piloted shredder this turn again? Which is quite a relevant choice. There was a game in DreamHack where um, a player he could have either piloted Shredded and then Hellfired, or Hellfired then piloted Shredded, and he actually chose to. He thought it would be a better play to uh, pilot Shredded then Hellfired because the possibility of getting like a healing, a Vitality Totem mm -hmm. is just so huge. It would have won in the game right there. And again, this might be one of those opportunities. Yeah, Life Coach needs to kind of hurry up though. Um, this could, I mean. This is obviously a big decision for him. Um, he's gonna actually kill. Oh, that makes okay. That kind of makes sense. Just to retaining his pallet shutter, 
gonna go ahead and uh, trade with the rest of his stuff and leave the totem golem only. Lepernum isn't lethal now, and, and uh, he uh, needs a taunt totem actually. Yeah, he needs a taunt totem. Yeah. Doesn't roll a taunt totem, no. so that's guaranteed lethal for life coach. And wow, that game was just ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Wow. So that was so coach, back and forth. Jeez. Uh, just on pins and needles that entire time in the end. Life Coach takes it, finally clears his Shaman, and that's going to be uh, bringing it up to one game to two. Life Coach still in the deficit there, but uh, he gets his Shaman out of the way. Now we get to see what he can do with his Midrange Hunter or his Mech Mage against uh, Firebat's Face Shaman. Yeah, two decks that Life Coach certainly has way more experience with. And I think they'll be pretty good matchups. Um, Mech Mage versus Mech Shaman, I think it's probably going to be close to a 50-50. But that Midrange Hunter probably still has a decent advantage against the Mech Shaman from Firebat. Even though it's just uh, it's it's not hybrid, it's not face. Still, Hunter just overall, ha I feel like, has a little bit better racing potential than Shaman. It also has the board clears, which Shaman does not. Unleash the Hounds could be a crucial card here. Yeah, definitely. Although I think he only has uh, one Unleash the Hounds, if I remember correctly. Or oh, you know Firebat? what? Um, I believe that was Firebat. And also Life Coach, he has Explosive Trap in his deck, so that could matter quite, quite a bit. Um, it also doesn't really make sense to have one Unleash the Hounds and one Explosive Trap in the deck. Because they're bo they both fulfill like similar purposes, and Unleash the Hounds is kind of just, you would think, the better card. Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of the cases. Though, I mean, sometimes it can fall flat. In the case, we aren't going to see the Hunter quite yet, uh, if at all, potentially. Uh, we, are, we are going to see the Mech Mage come up first, and uh, pretty good hands on both sides, it looks like, so far. Yeah, both very strong cards. Uh, very strong opening hands, although I feel like... Uh... A uh, Leopardome is actually, like, it's really good against control decks, I feel, but uh, against decks that really try to control for the board, it's really not that great because it doesn't really trade up really well. Yeah. Um, but, uh, whoa, okay. Looks like we're having some weird graphical issues, but, uh, yeah, going to be the triple two on the side of Firebats, whereas Life Coach, almost the same thing, full house in his hand. And, um, yeah, pretty tough decision here. He can go with the uh, with one of his two drops to get a good trade on that Lepernome, but he can also go for uh, double ones, though he probably doesn't really favor the uh, Cog Master getting traded into by that Lepernome. Hmm. Yeah, just uh, on turn one, uh, like, I think any player would rope right here. Yeah, this is. But it's it's life coach, so we'll probably see him go all the way to the end. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, this is honestly a really tough choice. He could literally play any card or any set of cards in his hand, and it would be uh, something that could be deemed correct. I think he might go for the Mech Warper here, though, just because. Yeah, just kind of taking a chance. His opponent doesn't have doesn't have anything to deal with it, and he also gets to play the uh, Clockwork Gnome as well. So just getting as much stuff on the board. Uh, as and uh, you know both of these trade pretty well with the Lepernum, so I kind of like this. He sets up for two mechs in the following turn as well, and uh, puts himself in a pretty good position. Yeah. On the other hand, um, Firebat will have a pretty strong board as well with that Totem Golem. This is exactly what Totem Golem was made to do. I feel um, it's if it was made to do anything, it's made to deal with mechs because all these mechs are two threes basically, or even like lowly one twos. Um, unfortunately for Firebat, though, he kind of overloads into his turn three, so he can't play Mech Warper into an Oatron. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate for him. And uh, Firebat's kind of hovered over that Crackle for a bit there. It's uh, it's really tough decision, honestly, because we can see in Life Coach's hand that he has the Yeti, and that's some something that's uh, you know on Firebat's mind. Obviously, doesn't want doesn't want the Yeti or the Shredder to come out uh, this early. It's something not really something he can deal with at the moment. And uh, it looks like he made the right play, I, I believe, just because that Yeti would have been so much trouble for him. Uh, as it is, Life Coach probably gonna have to just settle for this uh, Cogmaster and probably a ping. 
Yeah, I would think so. Um, I guess the problem with just only having a ping here is you expect to be playing the um, mech mechanical Yeti on turn four, yeah. and you don't really want to ping again. So it looks like this uh, Firebat might have a free 3-1 going into the next turn. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the, one of the problems. But you ping it just in case. Um, it's more likely that this ping to the Totem Golem is relevant than the ping to the face is relevant in this situation. So you kind of do it just in case. But, uh, yeah, you're definitely right. It's, it's so painful to ping that, knowing that you might not have the ability to do it later. Although he could go for it anyway this turn, considering he just picked up that uh, Anoitron. Yeah. Uh, Anorotrons, it's it's really the battle of Anorotrons here. We're going to see at least three in this game. And they're kind of, they're pretty relevant, but again, they're more of a nuisance than anything. Um, just kind of delaying the inevitable here. Um, I do like this course of action. Um, although not getting a mechanical Yeti on, on the board means that, for example, if uh, Firebat put a Spider Tank or a Totem Golem again on the board, uh, then Life Coach ha would have quite a bit more trouble dealing with it on the following turn. Yeah, and uh, one thing that Life Coach maybe is considering is that he can use his uh, spare part with the Yeti next turn to kind of be pretty annoying as well. Um, that's also something to keep in consideration. Again, sorry for the kind of uh, bits of lag here and there. We are piggybacking the Chinese stream uh, to give this to you. And uh, I guess while we're giving, while we're uh, saying stuff like that, uh, might as well give thanks to Temple Storm for allowing us to host on their channel as well. Uh, but looks like Firebat's deciding whether or not he wants to Rock Biter. Uh, he does have the mana for it, so he's able to, uh, you know, get that in there and clear yeah. the Noitron. Well, one problem that Sh uh, Shaman has in this matchup is that. Its hero power is quite worse than the mage hero power. You saw Life Coach was able to fit in the Fire Blast from the mage to do to to be quite effective. But for all Firebat has is totem, and I guess sometimes you can get a taunt totem that might be okay. Sometimes you can get a, a spell power totem, but honestly, spell power totem not really relevant in this matchup unless you get spell power lightning bolt on a three four. Uh, beyond that, a spell power just mostly overkills your opponent's minions. Well, you can just go face, you know. <laughs> that's, okay. It's extra damage on, on the face. So, but uh, w wouldn't you rather have a fire blast to face instead? Yeah, true. You don't you don't need to get the extra damage on the uh, spells when you just use the fire blast instead. Uh, I definitely agree. The fire blast is definitely a better hero power in this situation, which is why you don't typically see the shaman uh, run at all recently. Uh, to be fair. But, uh, I mean, it is working out pretty well, with, especially with that Tunnel Trog being able to buff it up quite a bit. And uh, that's why you're kind of seeing these decks a bit more today. Or uh, the Aggro Shaman a bit more recently. But, uh, yeah, in this particular situation, uh, not going to be working out quite as well. Though Life Coach has slowed down a bit, and uh, Firebat with that Power Mace can make some stuff right. happen here. Uh, I feel like Power Mace is like the one key card in the matchup because it's best. It's the best tool that Shaman has in order to gain board control. Uh, now that he's drawn the Power Mace, any mech that Firebat draws will be uh, pretty amazing here. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be trading out here uh, to get some good trades in. Make sure that his uh, Unbound Elemental doesn't take too much damage. However, that will be getting rid of his mech if he decides to do so. Um... What what he could do instead is kill. Well, I guess no matter what, uh, he's vulnerable to a ping on his Noitron, so kind of tough to save it regardless. But maybe he makes it just difficult for his opponent overall to kill the uh, Noitron here. Hmm. Not drawing that well here, but. The pr the problem with Mirror Entity is that Firebat's minions are probably going to be pretty weak. Mm. Um, and uh, But then again, if F Firebat draws into, let's say, any smaller mech, like a Mech Warper, or I believe he used, he's used both Neurotrons, if he draws into anything smaller, then he can just play it, kill it off with his Power Mace, and then buff it up, and that'll be pretty devastating. Something that maybe not even Archmage Antonius can deal with. 
Yeah, but instead he gets the uh, Crackle, which is not going to be too useful. Looks like he's going to just buff up his uh, Totem to allow him to... Or first to check for Counterspell, but also to you know make that kind of a threat. Something that Light Coach has to deal with. And uh, But overall, I mean, there's not much damage coming from Firebat. So I feel like Life Coach has the edge here, just because on turn 8 he can Antonite his Freeze. And unlike, I mean, Firebat may be able to deal with that, but it probably uses some sort of uh, resource. And then from there, Life Coach has a free Fireball. And if Firebat can't deal with it, then Life Coach has an endless stream of Fireballs. And uh, he's at a high lift life total where he can kind of execute that plan uh, yeah. without dying. Yeah. You would think two aggressive decks would be just going face against each other all the time, and um, cards like Archmage to Antonize wouldn't really matter. But the thing is, when two aggressive decks, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, it's more like a race for board control than a race for face. It's kind of interesting how that works. And Archmage to Antonize just plays as a 5-7, kind of with Taunt. is just pretty amazing here, especially since Life Coach does have the card advantage, and he has the life advantage to work with. Yeah, it's t uh, totally true what you're saying. Uh, with all these small minions that you have in the deck, if you don't make the good trades, your opponent's going to make really good trades. And uh, in the end, they're just going to have more damage to kind of uh, push you out of the game and to get that damage in eventually uh, if you decide to kind of go face. Obviously, there's situations where you, you ignore your opponent's minions, but um, yeah, typically it's not the case. And uh, it's pretty different from something like, for instance, you know, having your... Um, uh, than uh, having like you know uh, an aggro deck go against a mid range deck for instance, and it just it's over in two seconds just because the aggressive deck is able to uh, you know ignore all of the stuff that the mid range deck puts out there. So I think uh, we're going to be looking to a race in our hands. I'm going to I oh, oh, probably Archmage Antis and Freeze is going to come down. I would think just to uh, give an unlimited supply of fireballs. Yeah, he uh, is kind of wondering what that card is in Firebat's hand that Firebat has held on to for a few turns here. Uh, he does have a pretty clean, uh, you know, pilot shutter into the uh, Snow Chugga into ping off the totem there. Maybe he baits out some sort of removal and his uh, Antonidas has, you know, a free path. Looks like he's going to go with that play. I mean, he is mm -hmm. getting board control here anyway. Uh, I kind of like this, even though it's so tempting to go for the Antonidas. I feel like if he does this, like any removal that Firebat has, he's going to use on these cards. Um, or Firebat's going to go face and uh, maybe Life Coach can then free something with the Antonidas, like a big move. Right. Yeah, basically the problem here is that this Snow Chugger in particular is just so threatening because it shuts out the Doom Hammer altogether, which for, at this point of the game, it seems to be like Firebat's win condition. Um, with, with having that Doom Hammer frozen, it doesn't look like Firebat can win at all. Yeah, definitely. So Firebat, uh, he's eyeing that Crackle to be able to get rid of the Snow Chugger. It is that threatening. and um, Well, he might actually attack it with his second charge here instead. Oh, I, I, I think there's. Oh, no, I don't think face. there's really a way. Yeah, I, if freezing out for one turn, yeah, it's pretty bad. So he's gonna go for that. He's gonna go hit the face with the uh, rest of his stuff. Not gonna play the Mech Warper to give a free trade with that um, that uh, Shredder. But uh, here comes the pain for Firebat. Life Coach does he? I mean, he has to use the freeze just to get that, at least that one Fireball. But uh, interesting to see what he does apart from that. Oh yeah, I forgot about Firebat didn't play the Mech Warper because it couldn't deal with the uh, Mirror Entity, that's right. He's actually going to kill the 1-1 one, one and probably kill the... the uh... Well, yeah, this this looks about right. You want to yeah. kill off the Spell Power Totem and freeze the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, 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 okay. Lava Burst! There's a lot of damage. So can Firebat win this game without playing a minion from here on out? That would be pretty interesting. Uh, though he actually he's dead, isn't he? This next turn, turn, so he has to do something. He has to lava blast, lava burst. Sorry, the uh, he has to lava burst something, or otherwise he's dead, just on board, or with his information, I should say. Yeah, there's uh 23 damage on board, kind of. So is he looking for the doomsayer here? Is there any other card that would help him out here? Besides Doomsayer. Um, that, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything that stops spells. There's some stuff that stops minions. Anyway, Life Coach is going to take that game. He actually ties up the series after Firebat had gone up two games to zero. And we're going to be having a Hunter versus Shaman for our last game to see who can remain in first place in this group. 
Hunter versus Shaman. So uh, yet again, it's kind of like the Mech Shaman is really underperforming here. Um, the only game that Mech Shaman has won in this uh, tournament so far is in the mirror, where Firebat defeated his opponent again in the mirror. Oh, Life Coach won. Or Life Coach defeated uh, Firebat, rather, right? So again, it seems like even though Mech Shaman has been kind of like a hype deck in the past week or so. Maybe um, it's really not all typed out to be, or maybe it's just that there's a lot of bad matchups for the deck. For instance, both decks are running into Hunters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems it will work a bit better against uh, control decks, which is, uh, I assume, what they were trying to uh, match up against in this situation. But unfortunately, they're going against uh, decks that aren't working out too well for them. And uh, going back to that Shaman Mirror that was so close, that went right down to the end, those last few turns could have a huge role in determining the state of this group, considering that uh, Firebat could have won 3-0 and been, you know, plus 5 on the day uh, with a 6-1 and one score. Uh, but instead, maybe he loses this one. And, uh, he, I mean, obviously, he'd be he'd only be a plus one on the day. As far as games go, he'd be one and one in, in series scores. Life Coach would be two and zero. So that one game back then could change like, everything in this group. Yeah, there's, it's very possible for, um, like, let's say, both uh, three players to go two, one in matches. And then it all comes down to the group score. And with Firebat uh, dropping some games here, let's say he loses his next match. Maybe his score differential won't be as uh, good enough to advance him out of the group. It might be all the difference you need. Just one or two games, one or lost. Yep. And that's going to be huge going forth, obviously. And uh, so obviously this game five is really important. We've seen somewhat one-sided series so far. Uh, both the Western players taking out their Chinese counterparts three games to one in the first couple series. But here is the first nail-biting part of this group. Game five. This could determine a lot, a lot of how this group pans out. And uh, Firebat looks like he has the edge as far as opening hands, though that, uh, that Explosive Trap could do some work. Right, not only that, but you have Explosive Trap and Unleash the Hounds, which is a very potent combo against uh, a lot of the three health minions that Firebat is sure to uh, put on the board. Yeah, the dream, uh, the dream with this King's Elect is to get a low-cost minion, but still somehow win the joust. Oh, right, right. So what's what's the best minion you can get, really? Um, um, uh, maybe like a Haunted Creeper or a Mad Scientist. Now, Mad Scientist wouldn't even be good here, because you already have so many secrets in hand. Yeah. So a Haunted Creeper, and you joust against, um, let's say, a, Co a, another a Cog Cogmaster. Or a right, Tunnel Trog. Yeah, that's the funny thing is uh, when you're playing an aggro deck against you know mid range deck, and they win, but they get a uh, Doctor Boom. You're like, great, get, keep your Doctor Boom. <laughs> I mean, it allows, it gets it out of the way, it, it, right? Yeah, it it does thin your deck out a bit. But uh, at the same time, you're like, ah, eh, whatever. Uh, so it looks like he oh. loses. Uh, I mean, to be fair, it would be really lucky to win with a knife juggler, but uh, yeah, unable to get that. Firebat will be able to get a pretty good trade here. I wonder if he coins instead. Uh, it's gonna coin. Oh, he's gonna coin the uh, Noitron. Looks like. Looks like we're experiencing a bit of lag here again. Apologies for that. And um, all right, yeah, Noitron does come out. Let's see if he goes for the trade. Uh, pretty tough decision. I mean, face damage is pretty valuable, especially as the aggressive deck. And but killing this obviously would per make your Noitron even more annoying. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably the. Like, the only reason not to trade here is um, if you're scared of Unleash the Hounds here, I think. Yeah, what does Unleash the Hounds do really here? I mean, they trade it, not too well into the uh, Neutron anyway, so... Well, um, we're probably, I mean, no, I mean uh, the Unleash the Hounds doesn't really do too much here. It does. I guess it does get rid of two things. Gets rid of the Noitron and gets rid of the uh, Cogmaster and leaves yourself with the 3 1 against the 2 3. Um, the other option is to Web Spinner plus the uh, Explosive Trap. Hmm. Also, um, Firebot doesn't probably expect Life Coach to be running Explosive Trap, so that could. 
uh, work to his benefit. Maybe Firebat run just goes face and doesn't trade with any minions on board because he believes it to be Snake Trap. Right. Is is there any merit to playing Freezing Trap here instead of Explosive Trap? Um, I don't I don't think so. I mean, you're you're killing stuff off rather than freezing it. Uh, I think it's just better to play the Explosive. Yeah. So he's gonna go for that. Uh, doesn't doesn't go for the Unleashed Hounds. Could get Nitro Unleashed Hounds later on in the game. Uh, for a huge turn, and you kind of expect your opponent's board to be a little bit full later on, though we don't see any minions other than that Whirling Zapomatic that just got top decked in the hand of Firebat. But uh, yeah, really important decision here for Firebat. Uh, if it's snakes and you give your opponent snakes, I mean, there's no... Exp uh, there's no uh, AoE for yeah, the Shaman. No, yeah, no Lightning Storm, and he does go face, so that's huge for Life Coach. You can see in his eyes, though. And uh, that is, yeah, it isn't frozen, so you can see in the face of Life Coach, he's pretty help hopeful here about his prospects. But yeah, looking pretty good for Life Coach. Um, wow, going to be a full clear on the board of Life Coach, just so Firebat can get as much damage in with that uh, Whirling Zapomatic. Interesting. Ooh, Haunted Creeper. Yeah, Haunted Creeper will allow him to play that Freezing Trap if he so desires, or he could kind of go greedy with the uh, the Shredder, but he would be taking 8 damage guaranteed, which is not something you want to be doing. Yeah, you do kind of want to set up for Unleash the Hound, though. So possibly hope that uh, your opponent plays more minions on the board. I think he knows he'll probably at least kind of tote him up. I think this is uh, 8 damage that he can afford to take. Because on the next turn, if he just plays the Pilot Treader, he's kind of guaranteed to clear the board. It's pretty scary though, right? Because if you allow 8 damage here and your opponent uh, gets a Doom Hammer, then you're on a serious clock. So uh, you can ob obviously Life Coach is going to go to the rope, uh, as you can see here, to kind of figure this one out. And going to actually use... Uh, Hounds to clear the Warling Zapomatic, interestingly enough, and his young Dragonhog does contest the uh, Mech Warper. Yeah, again, the by far the most defensive play that he could have gone for, which makes sense from such a control player like Life Coach. And again, he's more in his element now than he was with the uh, kind of aggressive Shaman from before. Um... Another interesting decision here, the Freezing Trap will help mitigate that buffed uh, Mech Warper, but we do see a Lepronome that could get played eventually, though the Condor Keeper would be able to contest that as well. Uh, pretty tough decision for Life Coach again, um, especially because that, I mean, the Shredder can deal with the buffed up Mech Warper, but then he's taking a lot of damage in the meantime, so uh, pretty tough. Let's see how defensive he gets. Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing again. The the most defensive play with Haunted Creeper and uh, Freezing Trap, that's that's actually just really defensive. The problem with that play is it gives your opponent so much time to draw into cards where you're only putting in one point of, a singular point of damage on the board. Um, and, I mean, you're going to kill him over the course of 25 turns. But... <laughs> well, I mean, the other consideration is that you have a pretty solid hand here so maybe just slowing the game down as much as possible can work to your benefit because of the fact that your high you really want your high main to be uh just like smacking the face as often as possible that might be what life coach deems his win condition yeah it's pretty good analysis that's uh, exactly what he does go for and again the fire bats in kind of a predicament The, uh, once again, Firebat has to kind of play around traps here. The funny thing and... is, is that he can actually buff this Mech Warper after, uh, afterwards. Interestingly enough, and uh, he's only costing himself a totem, so this actually ended up working out pretty well for Firebat. Yeah, I think this worked out amazingly. I don't know if Life Coach had considered this because there's really no way for um, him to deal with this four or five. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to fight fire with fire. No more being able to play. He doesn't even have the option to play defensive anymore. Just going to have to put his own stuff on the board. And I uh, think this is just, just going to turn to a race. I have no. I see no reason why Firebat would ever even touch that high main. So, yeah. Just going to... 
So yeah, high main is generally just like the pretty much the best six drop you can have, but against such a a varied board, it's really hard to uh, for the, the high main to like play defensively because it can't really clear everything all at once. Yeah, he, he is able to clear this mech warper, which does represent a decent amount of damage. Uh, but you know, life coach, he has a pretty significant board. Firebat, on his last legs, he needs to be able to burst his opponent out as fast as possible. And gets the spell damage totem, which is pretty huge, get that one extra damage in. Going to be putting Life Coach at 5. Any Lava Burst from now on will seal the game. Uh, yeah, Life Coach, a, lo sorry. a lucky Crackle will seal the game. Yep. Um, but beyond that, I don't think there's really much. So what are you looking for, for here from the Animal Companion? I guess everything is good, right? Uh... Misha protects you, and the other two get you damage, extra damage to face. Right, uh, so, like we said, the only two cards he's Life Coach is really worried about in the next few turns are the um, the Lava Burst and the the Crackle. So really, this Taunt actually doesn't matter too much. Um, like, if you'd drawn Rock Biter here, it probably wouldn't have made that huge of a difference. Yeah. He's still going to have to uh, clear some of this board. Uh... Pro I mean, I guess we see the high main trade in maybe now, um, and then just Doctor Boom the face, and then do you does he have lethal next turn if he does that? Oh, maybe just maybe he has to go face now. So if he goes Doctor Boom face, okay, looks like that's neither here nor there. He's gonna go ahead and uh, hit face with everything. Oh wait, no. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, if he traded there, then um, he might have not set up lethal if Ooh, his opponent draws there's into... there's the crackle. Uh-oh. Oh, man. No spell, spell power damage. totem? So 50-50. A true 50-50 here. Three, Th this four, exact five, four, scenario six. happened at BlizzCon. At, between Daimong and Nyria. Let's see what he goes for. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> exactly lethal. Oh my goodness, so it goes down right to the end, Firebat finally takes the Shaman, both Shaman struggling so much there, losing twice before they can pick up the win, Tom's happy about it it seems, yeah. and uh, yeah, Firebat is our first 2-0 player, uh, he is not guaranteed, I believe, to uh, move on to the final stages, but he's in an extremely good position. Um, at since he won three one, he won three two, so he's a plus three overall. Uh, just has to avoid getting beaten too badly in his last match, and he has pretty good uh, decks in his last match. He has the priest, paladin, and mage remaining. Uh, I guess a little bit subpar, but needs to avoid uh, getting drubbed in the last match to be able to move on, uh, and also avoid you know some sort of three way tie. As far as life coach goes, that puts him down to one and one. Uh, looks like we are going to have some commercials for you right now. And uh, next up, we are going to have our two Chinese players go up against each other, that being Zoro and Blue. Don't go away. <laughs> 